So now that we have the cooling situation handled, at least for the most part, it's on to the other part of this plant, which was getting rid of the carburetor that was on this thing. We've got an old holly that uh, is misbehaving. It's all rigged open. Yeah, it's, uh, it's rigged open with some zip ties, which is not, uh, not professional. So we're gonna replace that guy. And uh, while we're in there, we're also gonna put on our new Wyand aluminum intake. Um, this is an old cast iron smog era intake that's on this guy. Not cutting it. So we're gonna pull that guy off, put our new intake on. A, it'll lose weight. B, it'll give us a little bit better cooling up on the top of the motor. So right now, 73 Charger Chick is working on her car. Hot mess. She's a hot mess. <laughs> this is the nice part about being a smaller person. This is called 90 degree, 99 degrees. <laughs> you can sit inside your car while working on it. Yeah. I, I as a fat guy, cannot do this. So, um, intake manifold is about to come off. Carb is already off. Uh, everything else is already loose. So pull all that stuff loose and we're gonna get that uh, intake manifold swapped out. What Katrina is doing here, she's actually removing the intake manifold spacer. We had a carb spacer on this thing. Uh, I don't know, maybe last fall last we fall. installed. Um, just to get a little extra oomph out of it. Typically speaking, you do pick up a bit of power uh, with the ability to pull the carb up a little bit. With this massive, I want to eat your face. Uh, let's scoop on it. We had plenty of room to work with it. So that spacer is going to come off. We're going to use that on the new Wyand intake manifold. It is held on with a set of Allen bolts. So now those Allen bolts are out, carb spacer comes off, and it's a gasket that's underneath it. And we already have all of our intake manifold bolts out. And we'll get our persuader bar out and get this uh, intake manifold off. Uh -huh. those in. I know. Okay. All right, so Intake manifold bolts are off. Everything is disconnected, throttle linkage is all disconnected. This is a last little piece that had to come out of the back, which is a vacuum connector, which runs for a vacuum brake booster. Um, for some particular reason, somebody got a complicated vacuum tee, uh, which has a normal barbed piece, which goes to the vacuum booster, uh, a small little barb, which I have no idea where that's supposed to go or what that's supposed to go to, but it creates a nice little vacuum leak. And then it's got a top piece which they just put a piece of fuel injection hose on and a screw through. Um, it's kind of hot rodder. Not at all the way you're supposed to do this. So we're gonna have to get ourselves a new piece from JEGS that only goes one right angle just to run that. Because the rest of this is... That's not, that's, no. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. So uh, get the persuader out and let's get this empty metal off. Um, you should be able to get the persuader underneath it. Underneath. In the front. Right there? Yep. Then, okay. Ow, my turn. Ah, okay. There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. Intake manifold is loose. That's why you gotta get that big old persuader bar out. See, it worked. I went, come on out. It's okay. Don't be scared. It's okay. Don't be scared. Okay, ready? And make sure those wires aren't in the way. And one, two, three. Nope. Nope.
Hopster. 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 Huh? Hopster. Taking a picture. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, oh my god, my face is red. I think my head's gonna explode. <laughs> Ta-da! There we go. Smog era intake manifold, four barrel removed. Uh, no date, date no date stamps on this thing, so we don't know exactly when this was. But the more and more we dig into this motor, the more it looks like this is pretty much an original 1973 400 off of who knows what. So the, the water pump was stamped 1973. Right. So, or well, so, 73, not 1973. So uh, just for giggles, I want to weigh this thing, see what this weighs, so we can <laughs> make it of an exact uh, exact number here. Oh. All right, intake manifold cast iron weighs in at 38.8 pounds. I can lift this one with one hand. Fourteen point two pounds. The aluminum manifold. So we've got a difference. We've got thirty-eight point eight versus fourteen point two. And as you can see, I pretty much lift this with one hand. What a difference! Okay, new gasket. So Remember, working on cars, always protect your holes. <laughs> Last thing you need is something falling in one of these holes. Dropping in a head. Yeah. You do that side, I'll do this side. Intake manifold off, carbs off. Uh, inspection underneath the valley pan. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, no bent push rods, no problems there. Everything seems pretty good. So we are going to uh, get this guy back together again. Was gonna get this together last night. Unfortunately, we didn't have any RTV anywhere in the shop. Uh, weird situation to have, but it is what it is. So couldn't seal the gaskets. So now that I have some RTV, we're gonna get the seals all done. We're gonna get this guy put back together again. And she should be ready to fire up. And we'll see how that new uh, Holly carburetor does. So uh, the funny thing is, uh, today our camshaft just showed up for the 451 that we're actually building for this car. So we're putting this car together for a couple of weeks. Uh, and then we'll have the other motor ready to go. Hey, that's how it goes.
Anytime you're working underneath an engine bay, especially in this situation where we have the valley fan off, the intake's off, you want to be very, very careful to not drop debris and pieces inside of this process or you're going to crunch all kinds of things. So rags in the holes, make sure when you're cleaning up the gasket surface that you make sure it comes out, not in. Otherwise, uh, bad things happen. Now, you're also going to want to keep a plastic tarp over this if you're not getting this project done in one shot. Otherwise, you're going to end up with dust and shop stuff that will settle in this. Then you've got all kinds of stuff floating around in your oil because this is exposed cam tunnel, lifters, push rods. All that stuff can carry debris, can carry dust right directly into your engine. So you don't want to deal with that. So be careful when you're doing this kind of thing. If you're not going to get it done all in one shot, make sure you have something to lay on this to protect it. In my case, it was just a little plastic cover here. Um, not a big deal, not super worried about it. We're also going to pull the oil out of this thing as soon as we get it all back together again, just to make sure anything that may have gotten into the oil immediately comes out before we have a chance to do any damage. So it is time to finally put this thing back together again, which should be a reasonably quick and dirty process. Remember I said that in case this kicks me in the teeth. surface all nice and tacked up close off your RTV tube no fun when you have RTV and it's all hard doesn't get you anywhere and that stuff's nice and solid time to lay these gaskets down here As I said, we're not using a ton of RTV here. We're just kind of doing it to create a sticky connection between the two sides. Uh, the RTV is not going to be what's making the seal well. It's going to be the gasket crush itself. So we're just using enough to get it nice and tacky for when we crush everything together so it all stays in place. Obviously, especially when you're talking about intake gaskets, if you have your intake gasket misaligned, you're going to end up missing airflow, which will end up missing horsepower. Valley pan gasket goes on block so. TV here. Holes are lined up. Make sure all of our intake holes are lined up. Cool passage holes are lined up. There we go. Shop trick. When you don't happen to have a little bag handy to hold your bolts, keep all your stuff organized, put them in the gloves. You got an old set of gloves that you just got greasy? Toss the bolts in the fingers. All right, 
So now we, when we cinch this pan down with these front and rear bars, that's what locks this pan down against the valley. Now we can just drop our intake manifold on here, use our brand new intake manifold bolts to cinch everything nice and tweet, and uh, we're moving along. So we did reuse the bolts for the valley pan gasket. Those are old cruddy bolts, but all they're doing is just keeping all that stuff locked down. Not a big deal, and pretty much nobody will see that. We did get a new set of intake manifold bolts from Mr. Gasket. Uh, no sponsorship involved in this, just saying we got these bolts from Mr. Gasket. All this stuff got came through Jags. One of the nice things about the Mopar platform, you can pretty much order everything you need from Jags. Uh, and for us, having Jags right down the road, super handy. So we're gonna use a brand new set of intake manifold bolts to bolt this YN intake manifold down, and we can start getting the carburetor on and uh, all the throttle linkage and all that fun stuff back here. Intake manifold on. With intake manifold bolted down, everything nice and torqued, the valley pan gasket replaced and valley pan torqued to specifications. So we don't have any oil leaks out of this guy. It is time to move on to fuel. With the fuel changeover, we are swapping the carburetors from the old uh, busted Holly carburetor that was zip tied to some new hotness, uh, which is a rebuilt Holly. Uh, it should be jetted a little bit better for what this guy is set up for and should give us a little bit more performance. Hopefully a little bit less of a breakup on the top end. And uh, yeah, so that's all done. We're gonna get this guy put back together again. I mounted this bitch on here backwards. Well, there we go. Intake manifold is on and installed properly. Now, time to run the fuel system and uh, get the new carburetor mounted up here. And then she's ready to fire. As you can see, intake manifold is on. Holly carburetor is on. However, we have run into another snag, which if you've ever watched anything with hot rodding, that's how this goes. So the old carburetor had a single feed off of this side. So the fuel line kind of ran up and ran over and then just kind of went in the side. With this carburetor, because it comes off the passenger side and we're running a hard line, with dual feed, this setup will run directly into where a big block Mopar distributor is. So one of the things you can't do is have two things in the same place at the same time. So we cannot run this thing this direction. Now there is a very simple fix for this, which however is going to require yet another trip to Jags. What we're going to do is we're going to put a half inch spacer underneath this thing and we're going to be able to kick that carburetor up and that half inch of space is going to give us enough room to be able to clear this distributor and run our fuel line without any problems. Now the nice thing about this is the fact that the other carburetor and intake manifold we did run a half inch spacer on. So this will actually allow us to get a little bit more accurate of a comparison apples to apples because both of these carburetors and intakes will be running on half inch spacers on them. So. Once we get this done, we should be done with all of our headaches as far as the uh, getting the fueling situation figured out. So uh, off to Jegs, hi-ho, hi-ho. Well, following a, a sh another short little trip to Jegs, I think I finally have all the last pieces I need. So pull the carburetor back off, put our new little Philonic spacer on here, and hopefully we can bolt this thing down. And now, finally it is. So we've got our half inch spacer 
4 to 150. It is an open spacer and uh, gasket on the bottom, gasket on the top. Set the carburetor back down on this guy and it should give us enough space to be able to run our fuel line. I love it when a good plan comes together. Now this was the fuel line that was running off the pump before. As you can see, it was designed to go over on this side. Now all we have to do is go here, just shorten this hose up a little bit, and we are almost ready to get this guy done. So, fitment should be good. Uh, we will secure this guy down on the plate here and then uh, start hooking up throttle language. Carburetor is installed. Now I need to get the throttle linkage hooked up. I need to get the coolant sensor plumbed in for our new coolant sensor that we're going to have underneath the hood here. There's the throttle linkage over here. Put it on. On hill. Radial, radial, radial. Well, she fired up. As you can see, it's alive, uh, sort of. Now, one of the reasons we did what we did here with the fuel is to be able to check our fuel mechanically. We've got a gauge now on the fuel line, so we can see where our fuel pressures are. As a carbureted car, this thing should be running in the neighborhood of five to seven pounds of pressure. Um, at the moment, it's holding about two to three pounds of pressure, which means we have a weak fuel issue. Uh, now this does have a brand new fuel filter, however there's a good chance that we have a bad fuel pump. Now I have a, a brand new fuel pump sitting over there um, to go in this thing, but we wanted to fire it up first off just to verify what we thought was originally the problem is the problem. Now that we have a gauge on it, we can see where that fuel level is. Because of the fact that fuel pressure is low, it's probably a bad fuel pump, so we're going to need to replace that fuel pump. Not a big deal, not something really difficult to get a hold of. We've got one in here, we can get it swapped out pretty quick, not an issue and that should get our fuel pressures back up. Now that can also be what was contributing to our, um, our poor performance on the higher rev range on this motor. We were seeing it break up pretty badly on the top end. So in addition to the heating issue, in addition to some of the other problems, uh, there's a very good chance we also had a fuel pressure dropping on the high end of the rev range. And if you're not holding fuel pressure all the way up to the top, it's gonna start breaking up and that could be what we're seeing. So uh, that's the long story of replace the damn fuel pump. So, time to replace the fuel pump. Whew. Well, let's talk about complications on this project. Um, you know, what started out as a simple carbon intake replacement uh, rapidly became a complete nightmare. As you saw most of, um, this thing wanted to fight us all along the way. So, where we stopped filming uh, for this episode was 
uh, figuring out the fuel pressure issue. So we swapped out the fuel pump. That resolved our fuel pressure issue. Now we're holding five to seven pounds of fuel pressure. Fantastic. Uh, once we got that resolved, uh, a new fuel pump was on, we had to relocate the uh, ignition coil because the ignition coil on the old intake manifold was mounted in some pre-drilled holes. A, the YN doesn't have pre-drilled holes for mounting the ignition coil on it. B, we now run fuel directly through that section where that coil was mounted anyway. So we now have that mounted over on the fender wall. So with the ignition coil relocated, uh, now we need to focus more again on the fueling system. Again, unfortunately with the Y and intake switch, we have no way of mounting the original OEM hard linkage for throttle. Um, these are designed for a throttle wire, throttle cable, and there was no way of mounting up the original OEM stuff. So back to JEGS we went and picked up a brand new throttle linkage setup to be able to run on this guy. Um, unfortunately, when we did that, this linkage mounts with the carburetor on the carburetor studs. With the spacer that we had to use, we ran out of space to be able to mount all this stuff down. So back to JEGS again for a set of longer uh, carb studs. So once we got all that done, we also picked up the linkage for the kick down that mounts underneath this uh, JEGS universal kit for throttle. That took care of all the throttle issues. Um, now once we got it out on the road and uh, able to test it a little bit, we noticed there was an ignition break up as it would get up into the RPM range. Um, there was also a little bit of a, of a lean pop issue where it was not getting enough fuel. So now we run into an issue of ignition and fuel. We start diving into that and find some issues with the distributor. Uh, originally we swapped out the vacuum advance unit because it was no longer actually vacuum advancing for whatever reason. Um, so we swapped out the vacuum advance, that got it a little bit better, but it still had some seriously weird breakup issues. And whenever we would hit it with a timing light, uh, the base timing was fine as, long, as soon as you would pull in advance, it would get all kinds of weird. Um, so we actually had a physical problem with the distributor. So we swapped out the distributor, now we have a brand new uh, unit from Cardone that's running the distribution of our Spark. Uh, at that point in time, we were able to at least drive the thing and start figuring out our jetting problems as far as the carburetor goes. Uh, we, mo we moved the jets up considerably from where they were when it was rebuilt and uh, we still have a little bit of that to handle um, going forward but that stuff we're going to tune on the dyno. So as of right now she runs turn stops drives um, considerably happier than she was before. We still have some exhaust leaks we're gonna have to figure out. Um, unfortunately the exhaust uh, header bolts that bolt the headers to the head are decrepit and rusty and I'm really terrified to try to turn those bolts off to replace those exhaust manifold gaskets because if I snap one of those things off, now the heads have got to come off and we got all kinds of problems. So we're going to leave it alone for right now with the exhaust manifold uh, leak, but uh, we're going to get her on the dyno next and do a little carb tuning and see what this thing has picked up with all of the new goodies on here. So we're going to wrap this video up. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've stuck around this entire time. We definitely got a long-winded uh, this was a whole lot more work than we expected it to be, but that's how hot riding goes. Uh, make sure you click on the subscribe button, drop us a comment below. Hopefully you've enjoyed the Mama's Mopar project and uh, seeing Katrina work on this thing uh, throughout the entire process. We'll see you next time.